G'day, everyone. Welcome to UFC Fight Night Makachev versus Green live betting show on the Punt School channel. And I believe we are also live on the Trademate YouTube channel too. First time for that. Uh, so I hope it's working. If it's not, well, too bad. But anyway, hopefully we'll get a few more people tuning in along. And as always, throw any questions you like at me throughout the stream and i will yeah get to them whenever they come through whenever i see them come through but yeah today we'll be going through the main card of ufc fight night uh the apex once again obviously be going through the main event bobby green islam makachev also be going through uh armin petrosian versus gregory rodriguez yoel alvarez versus armin sarukian Priscilla Cachoeira versus G. Yeon Kim, and also Wellington Terman versus Misha Serkinov. As always, I'll be as respectful as I can be to those who pay for the monthly subscription of MMA Pun School, so I won't be giving away all the all the treasure today, all the beautiful bets that we'll be placing this weekend, but I'll give you guys a few things just to... And obviously just my thoughts on everything and you guys can use that uh, as you like and go from there. Let's kick things off. Gregory Rodriguez versus Armin Petrosian. I'll get the odds up so you guys are aware of all of that before I get into it. You can see money line here, Petrosian at 2.36 and Rodriguez at 1.59 courtesy of top sport i think rodriguez obviously has a huge maybe not a huge but a pretty big advantage on the ground and in the wrestling too here so you're thinking that basically as soon as this kicks off you know within the first minute i think you can probably expect to take down um from rodriguez or at least pretty soon into the fight um <clears throat> The thing is, I wouldn't be surprised if he did trade with Petrosian for a bit, who's obviously a very high-level kickboxer. Um, just, I guess, out of a surprise factor, because I guess Petrosian will just be thinking he's going to take me down as soon as he can. So he's going to be very worried about that, potentially about just defending the takedown or maybe trying to in a way, let him take him down but get to an advantageous position where he's not going to, you know, have his back taken or, you know, something something dangerous like that where he could be in a bit of a predicament. Um, so he'll be very focused on copying that takedown. So there could be, you know, he could faint for a takedown, come over with, a, with some kind of punch or, you know, anything really. Like Rodriguez, although he's in danger anytime he's on the feet with Prochorizian, um wouldn't be too surprised if you saw him um you know stay there for a little bit and try a few big punches because i mean he's not he's reasonably technical especially when he's not gassed um and he's got huge power too so it'd be interesting to see what happens there but like i said i think uh yeah he'll get a takedown pretty early i expect him to be able to get petrosian down um and, I mean, from there it's going to be very interesting because you've got Petrosian in all of his fights. He's never really gotten, or at least in his recent fights, he's never really been in a really bad position. I think he had his back taken for a few seconds in his contender series fight, but he's never really, he's always been able to work really well to his feet. And the main thing is he's always kind of been able to make the person work for the takedown or work the wrestling against the cage or whatever so i think i do think though that gregory is the best grappler he'll ever he's he's faced so far so i think there is a decent chance that rodriguez could find a sub or a ko in the first round just from ground and pound or yeah submission on the ground um and, I mean, all the odds kind of are based around that because I believe once the fight gets into the first, I'm sorry, into the second and third rounds, the scale leans more and more towards Petrosian. So 
if you're Rodriguez, I think he has to just try and get Petrosian out there in round one or very early in round two. Because as we have seen in his last fight um, against, uh, oh, God, I've forgotten his name, the Iron, Iron Turtle, that's all I can remember. I can remember his nickname, but not his uh, a park, that's it. Um, he gassed in that fight big time. And it was because he was made to work a little bit on the ground and work to get those takedowns, work to keep him on the ground. So Armin can do that, I believe. But I do think that if Rodriguez can outgrapple Park, I think he can most likely do worse on Petrosian. So I'm very, yeah, I'm pretty, like, I think there's a big chance that um, Petrosian could get finished in the first round. But if uh, Armin Petrosian can just get into that second round or just late in the first round or whenever he gets back to his feet, if he can hang in there and get to the second half of this fight, I think the the tide just completely switches over and then we're looking at a Petrosian knockout at some point um, from Rodriguez just having to wrestle so hard that, um, that he's gassed himself similar to the Park fight. So... I mean, the other alternative is that, you know, Rodriguez just doesn't implement his grappling at all and tries to make this a striking fight just so he doesn't sap his gas tank. But I just find that pretty unlikely. I think there's, I just, I don't see Rodriguez having the confidence to stand up with him for a long time. Um, Yeah, I mean, Petrosian just really only needs 30 seconds on the feet. Um against a gassed Rodriguez and it's all over. So it's these are hard ones to, to put prices on in terms of betting because, you know, what are the odds of Petrosian surviving Rodriguez on the ground and not getting submitted or ground and pounded, making it to the second round and then finishing him? But then, you know... <laughs> Yeah, it's, it, it's very hard things to put a price on. And I guess the only reason Rodriguez is favourite is because, you know, they both come into it fresh. And as fresh fighters, Rodriguez is the better fighter from everything that we've seen. So um, for me, if you want to be oh, like we saw before, there's no, um, there's no odds on the props for top sport yet. But for me, I would be looking at... If you want to side with Rodriguez, I'd be looking at round one victory for Rodriguez. Maybe if you can get paired round one and two victory um, inside the distance for Rodriguez. Um, And if, but if you want to side with Petrosian, then I'd be looking at possibly money line or KO deck, or also just Petrosian KO would be a most likely scenario there. If um, if he does outlast Rodriguez's gap, uh, grappling. So, um, yeah, in terms of the money line, I actually kind of think that, you know, one five nine for Rodriguez, I kind of think that'll come in a bit more. But, um, but yeah, in terms of the props, um, yeah, that's, I mean, that's just how I see the fight going. You guys can go and look at the prop prices yourself. And if you're agreeing with what I'm saying, you look at the odds, you think, yeah, that looks about right to me, value, then, yeah, go for it. But I will move on to Armin Sarukian and Yoel Alvarez. Such an exciting fight, this one. Uh, It should highlight the next big thing at lightweight, like the next young. I mean, Yoel Alvarez isn't too young, but, you know, both these fighters are probably going to end up in the top 10 at some stage. But, um, yeah, it's just a really cool time for them to be meeting each other in their career. I think Alvarez is slightly better on the feet um, just because he's, he's got a much better chance of finishing the fight with his strikes, with a, you know, knee, elbow, kick, punch. I mean, the man has a lot of weapons. He's quite unpredictable, big range. Um so he he's the better striker. But the thing is, is Sarukian's legit on the feet. I think people just dismiss that because he's such a good wrestler, but he's improving every single fight. He's getting more comfortable on the fight, uh, on the feet. 
um, you know, highlighted by that knockout in his last fight against uh, Giagos. He's a little, you know, he's not as unpredictable as Alvarez. He's a lot more, I guess, orthodox in his stand-up. You know, he's reasonably a lot more predictable at least. But the thing is, is Alvarez is a little bit, I would say he's a little bit cocky on the feet. Like he's, he's, he's open to be hit. He leaves his chin in the air when defending. So if you are willing to, he, I think he just assumes that no one's really willing to engage with him on the feet. Um, he's so confident in himself there that, you know, he's happy to go full out attack and not worry too much. Not going to say full out attack, but he's not too worried about his defense. And like I said, yeah, he does leave his chin in the air sometimes. I also think his tactic of willing your opponent, like almost like letting, like letting him take you down, you know. So in his past fights, he's almost like willed his opponent to to let him take him down. I don't think that's a great tactic in a three round fight, especially at a high level, higher level that he's going to be fighting uh, this time around against Sarukian. It's understandable because he has a great guillotine. But the higher you go up in level, the the less chance you are of, of sinking in a guillotine against a more skilled opponent. So I in a way, I think it's a reasonably straightforward game plan for Saruki. And I think if you can get him to the ground and avoid the guillotine, I think he goes like such a long way to winning this fight. And I think that's the reason why his odds are the way they are. Um, like I said, I do think he, he you know, Alvarez is a bit loose on the feet, so if he does want to stand with him, sure, there's a chance that he could find a knockout, but I, I think that's kind of stupid in a way. Like, you might as well just take him to the ground in your, at using your strengths. And if you do get him to the ground, you know, he's fought guys like um, Ramos, Makachev, skilled grapplers, skilled submission artists, and... You know, he stayed out of danger for all of those fights in terms of, you know, not getting submitted. So I know he has a great guillotine, uh, Alvarez, and he's great off his back. He'll throw all sorts of things up. But I back Sarukian in to be able to avoid most of those um, most of those attacks. So I think if Sarukian can, yeah, avoid the guillotine, he, be he becomes a huge favorite because he should be able to, out wrestle Alvarez quite easily. He's got pretty poor takedown defense. And when he gets to the mat, I think he can hold position on top for long periods because, yes, Alvarez will throw up subs from his back. Um, but, I mean, as I said, he's he's fought, he's fought Makachev Ramos before. Like, it's nothing he hasn't seen before, I don't think. Um, so, I mean, betting-wise, I think, you know, Alvarez around that three mark makes sense to me. And I, I do think the current odds of uh, Alvarez at 2.79 and uh, uh, Saruki at 1.44, they're around, right? Um, but I, 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 just, I, I really do think that Armin just has to avoid a, avoid a submission of some kind. And, you know, uh, Alvarez does a lot of, he doesn't really try to get up. He just likes to work for subs, which is great, but it's not exactly going to win you a points fight. So, yeah, if I'm betting this one, I'm thinking Alvarez um, submission or um, or potentially inside the distance I think is a good bet. I think I've seen fours bandied around for that. I think Alvarez inside the distance at four is a good bet. Um or if you want to go the Armin side of things, Sarukian, I would be looking at the decision because he's never really, oh, I could be, I'm pretty sure he's basically never submitted anyone before. He doesn't really search for submissions too much. I mean, and he's going against a skilled grappler. So I highly doubt he's going to get a submission. Uh, he also looks for damage, uh, ground and pound kind of damage and mostly just tries to hold position. So 
I think the chances of him finishing Alvarez are quite small. I think he'll play it quite safe in an attempt just to hold him down on the ground for long periods. So I quite like um I quite like if you can get it at an, any other bookmaker that I mean maybe Top Sport will bring it out to eventually they'll bring out their props. Um if you can get Armin Sarukian decision, you know, two point seven five or more, I think that's a good bet. And that's you know, that's where I would be leaning towards. Cool. Uh, let's go on to the next one. A little bit of a, I mean, pretty steep drop off in uh, in quality of fights here. I'll just have a quick drink. You got Priscilla Casuera versus Ji Yong Kim. Casuera at two point four one, and Kim at one point five seven. Let me just get this one up. I think that this could be a little bit of a firefight. I mean, as I said, it's not the greatest level of competition here, but I think the reason why it's on the main card is because it's probably going to be quite a quite a fun fight, bit of a firefight, bit of a brawl. Um, I think they kind of cancel each other out in terms of the grappling or wrestling. I don't think either of them are great there, and I don't, I kind of don't really see either of them going for it. The only reason, the only way I think I'd see one of them going for it is if they were really struggling on the feet. But I don't think there's that big of a gap on the feet that one of them will think, unless it's like, you know, Conor McGregor style where he's rocked and he goes for a takedown just because he needs to like somehow get away from this person. Um, I don't, I think that would be the only reason it would happen. But anyway. You know, neither of these girls have attempted one takedown in their UFC career. So should stay standing for the most of it. I think Kim is more technical, has better fundamental boxing, uh, straight straight punches especially. She's got some nice ones. You know, she hasn't got the fastest hands, but her straight punches are very nice, whereas Cachoeira is more of a brawler, uh, needs to be in tight to have some success. Uh, Kim, very hittable, doesn't really use her reach advantage that well. So Cachoeira may have some success early on in just hunting her down, being super aggressive. Um, but I think Kim Kim will fire back. She doesn't shy, shy away from a firefight. And I think she is the, you know, being the more technical striker, I think she's, She's more durable. I think she actually has a better chance of finishing the fight with a knockout because she has a better chin um, than Cachoeira, I believe. I think there was just some things in that uh, Cachoeira, uh, Robert, Ro Robertson fight, Gillian Robertson, that I was a little bit – she looked like a tiny bit of a quitter to me, like once – she realized that things weren't going to go her way. Like eye gouging someone is like the lowest of lows. So I feel like she she showed a bit of weakness there in the fact that she'll really try anything to <laughs> uh, when when it's not going her way, she'll stoop to the lowest levels. And I think that shows like a weakness in mentality overall. So I think she's more more of a quitter than Kim, if you want to say it that way. So I kind of think that if they do get in a firefight, I would favor Kim a little bit more in terms of getting a knockout. Um, I think there's a good chance that Cachoeira could walk onto something. You know, she can be pretty reckless, so she could walk onto a massive jab or just get pieced up over three rounds because I think Kim has the better gas tank and a better chin, like I said. So I think for this one, if you're looking for a bet, Cachoeira's best chance, I would say, is an early-ish KO somewhere in the first or second round. I think that's a um, a good angle if you want to go with Cachoeira. I mean, she could win by decision too, don't get me wrong. Um, and if you want to side with Kim, I think the KO prices are a little bit big on Kim. Um, but... Maybe just a money line play. I mean, I'm let me see the odds again here. Kim at 1.57. It doesn't – like I would say that's the value side right now, 1.57 for Kim, but it's not exactly 
I mean, there it might be like one percent of value. Like there's there's nothing really in it for me. So, um, but yeah, hopefully that gives you guys some insight into what I think about that fight. Um, next one is the middleweights, Serkinov and Terman. This is, I think, as close to a 50 50 fight as you'll ever get. I think Terman's a better striker. And I think he will have some success early on in the striking while he's got a full gas tank because he does, he's not, he's not crazy. He's, He's just got a full variety of attacks, I would say, and he can be quite unpredictable. And I think that unpredictableness will always keep Serkinov on the back foot and be a little bit worried. So I think, and I mean, probably waste a little bit as gas tank too, Terman throwing so many wild strikes. So I can see while he's full of gas, Terman will be good on the feet, better on the feet. I get the feeling that Serkinov's going to look to time a takedown. Um, so, you know, one of Terman's wild attacks, I think that's when Serkinov will try and time a takedown, um, when Terman is, yeah, coming in with a wild attack. I think Serkinov is slightly better in the grappling, but it can be a bit of a toss up if, if he does manage to, I think the thing is if, if he does manage to get Terman on his back, he could score some points or get a finish just because from what we've seen, Terman looked pretty terrible on his back versus Bruno Silva. Um, but you know, I could he's he's a skilled jujitsu, so you know, I could see him working back to his feet. Um, I think cardio wise, they're pretty similar. I don't really see either of them having a big edge. Maybe, maybe Terman's a little bit better in that area. Um, the biggest edge that Misha has is um, is his experience. I mean, that's the big edge he has. He's he's smarter, and you know he can take this fight where he wants to based on mistakes that Terman might make. So the other big thing is the middleweight factor for Serkinov. That's the other big factor for me. Is he said that he felt weaker at middleweight. It was first ever cut. He looked really sucked in. Like he didn't look great against uh, Jotko. Physically, he didn't look that great. You would think a big guy who is able to throw around light heavyweights or at least out grapple a lot of them, that he would be able to do even worse to middleweights, but it just didn't transfer, did it? Um, I heard in an interview that he's, you know, he – didn't really do a great job of the weight cut last time. He almost got too stressed about it and cut too much weight. So, or at least didn't do it appropriately. Um, so I do expect him to have a better weight cut this time and look a little bit, I think he will look in better shape. And I, for me, it's more of a like, let's have a look at him on fight day. It might even be like, let's have a look at him as he walks out to the cage and see, you know, what kind of shape is he in. Um, you know, if he's looking as skinny and depleted as he did last time, you know, maybe Terman's the way to go. If he's looking really bulked up and, you know, he's put all that weight back on, then I think Serkinov is a good bet. Um, thing is, yeah, Terman's young. He'll always be improving. So you're going to see a better version this time out than you did against Alvi. Um, so I guess you know we should we should see the best version yet. And also he was preparing to fight Rodolfo Vieira. So it's not like he's gone from oh, I don't know, some kind of, you know, middle not like he was preparing for Israel Adesanya or a striker, and then all of a sudden he's been given a high level grappler. So he was he's basically fighting the exact same kind of opponent. Um for me on this one, you've got the odds up. Uh, Pretty interesting betting affair here. It's kind of been going in and out all week. But you got Terman at 1.97 and you've got Serkinov at 1.84 on top sport. I think for me, I'll be waiting until I see at least the weigh-ins or also the um, – I'll be having a look at – I mean, I don't think you can get images of them like, you know, a day after their weigh-in to see what they look like. But I'll be definitely looking as they walk out to see what kind of shape Serkinov's in and if he's as sucked in as last time. So, yeah, that's how I'm probably going to play 
that one. Got a comment. How good's that? Wellington for the win by uh, by Nicholas Lee. Yeah, like I said, mate, I think it's a um I think at the moment, let's for me, like I'm just gonna wait to see what Sirkinov looks like. But if you look sucked in again, I think Wellington at twos. Um or I think I'm it almost like the favoritism f- for me is based off how Sirkinov looks. So um yeah. I mean, if, yeah, Sirkinov is looking in pretty skinny shape again, sucked in, then, yeah, I think Wellington is, he should be favourite. All righty, let's get into the last one, the main event. Let me just reset my camera quickly. All right. Green versus Makachev. Odds, as you can see here, Green is 6.75 and Makachev is very low at 1.1. Short notice fight, obviously, for Green. He, uh, Makachev, was going to fight Benil Dalyush, and this is a completely different opponent for Makachev. But at the same time, Bobby Green fought two weeks ago against uh, Nazareth Hakpress. Dominant victory there, but Makachev is a huge level up and a completely different fighter. Also talk that Green, I think he even said himself, he went on a bit of a, you know, he's put on a lot of weight since that last fight, had a bit of fun, partied, et cetera, et cetera. So he's not exactly, uh, yeah, he's not going to be in the same shape as he was two weeks ago against Hak Parast. Uh, and it's, but it's also at 160. So um, a catch weight there, not lightweight. So let's see how how he looks on the scales on um, on uh, what would that be for Australians? It will be Saturday morning, so that'll be interesting. But for me, Makachev, you know, he's most likely going to get Green down and control him, like most of his fights. I think Green's takedown defense is good. No one really knows that he's a good wrestler because he doesn't ever. Um, use it really the last time he like proactively used it was in his Moises fight and that's a good comparison too because Moises fought um fought Makachev um and Moises and him were like pretty equal in the wrestling so um yeah Green's got good takedown defense but you have to be a, like a supernatural human being just about to avoid the takedown from Makachev at some point in the fight. You have to be elite, elite, and I wouldn't say he's elite. So, you know, Islam's probably going to be able to get him down. Um, Islam also has decent striking. Um, so Crean kind of has to worry about that too. Don't think he'll worry about it at all. I think he'll just fight with his hands down, which is actually advantageous in this situation. Yes, he might get hit with a big punch. He's got a great chin, though, so I'm sure it'll be fine. But it's advantageous in the sense that his hands are always going to be down, or at least, you know, when he's not punching, um, which helps defending the takedown, because takedown, sorry, uh, or at least, you know, helps with underhooks, you know. Um, his, his underhooks are always going to be there. You know, it might you know Islam might try a different kind of takedown, some kind of trip or something like that, but um, at least Green is going to be in a good position to start with. But if he gets you up against the fence, then, yeah, the fence can help you, but um, Makachev can kind of grind away at you and find his openings for a takedown. Um, I, Green's dangerous because he comes into this fight with basically zero care in the world. Um, he's got zero to lose, like absolutely zero. At this point in his career, he's hovering around that top 15, top 20 mark. He's 35, 36 or something. He's got zero to lose. If he loses to Makachev, um, it doesn't really do anything to his career at all because he'll probably just get someone around his next around his ranking next time and he can just build up from there again. Um, the only thing I would do is hamper his chances down the line of getting a title shot, but I can't really see. It's a long way to go for Green to get there. He's, he's literally going from number 20 to number one in the division just about. So he's got nothing to lose here really. Um, 
So yeah, Green will approach this, I think. He'll just try and catch him with something. I don't think he'll be thinking about the takedown all that much. I think he'll just be thinking, I'm going to try and knock this bloke out on the feet or as he tries to come in for a takedown. Um, I think Green's essentially his only way to winning, very close to his only way to winning, is by knockout, whereas Islam's, I would say, his best chance is probably locking in a submission at some point. You know, Green's decent on the ground. He's got good reversals, but, I mean, he's able to get back to his feet, but he doesn't do it in a way that's going to protect his back or anything like that. So I can see Islam getting his back pretty often or at least a couple of times, um, and that's a very dangerous to, position to be in if you are Green. I think Islam's, yeah, best path is probably via submission at some point. Second would be... Um, Second would be by ground and pound potentially, but I would say I'd probably rank it into I'd go submission, decision, then knockout. I would say in for me that's how I would order it. But I can see either way, you know, him winning by KO over decision. Um, I think the submission prices for Makachev, from what I've seen, obviously Top Sport haven't released them yet. From what I've seen, I think. I think if you can get twos or above from uh, Makachev's submission, that's good. Anything lower than, I just don't really think it's worth it just because he has so many ways to win this fight. Um, and for Green, the, the prices for Green knockout are a little bit too high. I think if you can get Green KO at 11, 12 or more, which you should be able to, um, that would be the bet for me. Um, let's get to some of these uh Comments here from Nicholas Lee he says, I have some leans for this card. I like Joel. I assume that means uh, Joel Terrence under on the zoo. I, or maybe he likes um, Joel Alvarez, sorry. Uh, Terrence unders and the zoo fight to go over two and a half. Over two and a half. Oh, I'm a little bit confused what he's doing there. But anyway, Nicholas Lee says, Bobby could win on points. Oh, I mean, he obviously could, but. I really think they're, that's his second way of winning this fight because I just cannot see a scenario where he defends takedowns for 25 minutes and outpoints. I mean, if he did defend takedowns for 25 minutes, then he's most likely going to outstrike Makachev. But I cannot see a scenario where he defends he, essentially, he would need to defend takedowns for three rounds to win three rounds versus out of the five. I cannot see him doing that, to be honest. Like, I can see Makachev taking him down basically when he wants to or at least holding him up against the fence and just grinding on him. So that's why I say, yes, he could win on points, but if Bobby Green is having success and he's winning on the points... I think he can find a knockout. If he is outpointing um, Makachev, there's a good chance he's piecing him up on the feet and a good chance that he's stopping the grappling. And if you stop the grappling of Makachev, it's, it could lead to a gas situation where Makachev is so tired from not being able to get him to the ground that he starts to get very tired. And then that leads to you know, his arms being gassed, not being able to defend himself on the feet, et cetera, et cetera, leads to a knockout. So, you know, let's, I mean, if, if let's just say the true odds of Bobby Green winning a seven, let's just say, um, oh, I'm terrible with this kind of stuff, but, you know, his chances of getting a submission are bloody, bloody low unless Makachev capitulates in some form. Um, yeah, I would. I think the way it's um, the odds are represented at the moment in and most bookmakers is that Green has a better chance of winning a decision than he does a knockout, and I would flip that around and have it the other way around. So, um, yeah, that's how I see it. Any more comments, guys? Flick them through. But I will start to wrap up. As always, um, yeah, it'd be great to have as many of you guys subscribe to. MMA Pun School. If you want to see my results, head to velabetting.com. Things are going well. 
rough weekend last weekend, but I think we're still sitting at an ROI of about 8% on the channel. So things going reasonably smoothly there. But if this is your first time on the channel uh, at TradeMate or um, Pun School, please like and subscribe both channels or wherever you're watching. Um, and I will be back next week with, um, I think, oh, yeah, it's UFC 272, I think, two or three. And we've got a uh, grudge match of all grudge matches, Masvidal versus um, Covington. So that should be an absolute cracker. But thanks all for tuning in. Great to have a few more people tuning in on the live show. And I'll be back same time next week with Masvidal and Covington. Catch you guys later.